Hello and welcome to St Michael's Hill. Um, excuse the mess, uh, I wanted to bring you this video um, because it's something that I've been very excited about and been waiting for for a very long time. Um, so I haven't had a chance to tidy up, but uh, I hope you forgive that. Um, today is the day that I am now ready to run uh, a train round the uh, whole loop under its own power for the very first time. So I'm going to do that in a second and uh, bring it to you on video. Um, I've thought long and hard about which one to send round first. Um, various bits have been kind of tested um, by a few locos just to make sure that uh, certain things were for kind of there, but I'm pretty sure um, we're all good now to go. So the first loco that I'm going to send round is actually one that I've only just received. So I'm going to show you that now in some more detail and then uh, send it around for its uh, first trip around the garage. And here she is, the loco that's going to be going around first. It's uh, 56038 uh, Western Mail in Transrail livery. This loco has been uh, resprayed and uh, detailed. It was um, 56032 in coal sector livery from Hornby. Um, it's had a complete respray. The colours on that were uh, completely wrong. I'm pretty sure when I uh, first got it, I did a video on the how bad the colours were but uh, it's been kind of a uh, detail throughout as well so I'm going to run you through um, what's been done. The work wasn't done by me, um, I asked Laura McWilliams if she would uh, do the honours, uh, something that I've kind of really wanted in the fleet and I just wanted to make sure it was right and uh, some of what uh, she offered to do was kind of beyond uh, what I've been basically kind of doing uh, up until now and as she was doing the repaint uh, it made sense for her to do a few other bits. The first thing that Laura did was the uh, fan grills. These are shore plan parts and uh, she's fitted them and they do look a lot better than the original. Uh, I do have uh, another Hornby uh, 56 which I've uh, compared them to and they're a lot finer, a lot more detailed. Unfortunately when the uh, loco was first sent back it was damaged in the post uh, because one of these was uh, basically ripped off but uh, Laura very kindly uh, took it back and, uh, and redid the work and sent it over, which was really, really good of her. So um, really, really pleased with how they've come out. The next section that's been done are these uh, parts here that I believe are kind of uh, where the loco is lifted by the cranes. There's kind of the little covers, the little, uh, um, little uh, rectangular kind of uh, ports there on the Hornby model. They're just kind of moulded. These have been uh, stuck on individually. Um, again, an etched part from Shore Plan. Another thing that Laura's done is to uh, detail the front end. 038 was actually quite unique. Uh, for quite a long period of its life, it had class 60 buffers. Uh, but in 1995, I believe it was, it actually had these kind of completely rectangle ones. So they've been put on, um, I believe they were taken from a, a class 92, uh, uh, class 92 yet. So they've been put on, it gives it quite a unique look. Uh, it's only got them on one end. So I've had that end detailed up and um, just to kind of show them off, there wouldn't be much point in uh, having that at the end that were connected up to the trains. So that's pretty much all the work that Laura's done, obviously including the uh, complete respray and renumber. Um, it's been given as well a uh, nameplate, again, a uh, shore plan part, uh, very nice kind of etched uh, detail as well. So very, very happy with uh, how she looks. Transrail class 56s were very, very common in the mid to late 90s in South Wales often on uh, coal or steel traffic, but they could be seen on kind of pretty much all uh, freight duties in the area. This loco is going to feature heavily in the uh, the layout and I'm very, very glad to have it. At some point I wouldn't mind getting uh, another 56 in Transrail, but in the uh, Dutch version of uh, the livery. Um, but uh, I think for now this is uh, pretty much what I'm looking for. So then I think it's about time we gave this a spin and see if we can complete the first full loop of anything under its own power on St Michael's Hill, or at least on the uh, the new layout. Um, I'll take it nice and slow in case there's any problems, um, but fingers crossed we'll make it all the way around. I'll talk you around the layout as well as we go, just to kind of uh, give any of you who don't know uh, a little idea of uh, what each section is going to be. Uh, we're all kind of uh, ready to go, I think. Just check. Yeah, all good to go. So this section we're on now is going to be uh, an embankment, and there's going to be a small kind of uh, road uh, under bridge or tunnel uh, that goes where the latex rubber is. 
This curve is going to kind of be partially hidden really by scenery and things like that. Um, the depot will be um, where this big white board is now, so a lot of this will be kind of hidden. Um, and then the locos will come, or the trains will come through uh, past the back of the uh, loco, uh, loco shed. There'll be some sidings kind of where that uh, intercity class 47 is, although um, you probably see all the pe pencil lines all a bit at different angles. Where all this stock currently is will be kind of the beginning of the uh, platform area, um, which will run from where the Dutch 37 is up uh, to where the uh, kind of uh, multimeter box is. That'll be kind of the scenic break as far as the railway is concerned. There'll be uh, a town scene above these tight curves on the end. So the uh, loco's going to be kind of hiding around, goes around the, the bend there. And this will be all under a town scene, so it'll all be hidden. Um, and we're coming into the fiddle yard now, so I'm going to cross some of this uh, complex point work. And uh, into the fiddle yard proper. After I've done this, I'll uh, I'll give it a little bit more speed, but then I'll also uh, decide on which uh, train it should probably pull. I think probably I know which one it'll be, but uh, I'll have a think about it, and uh, you'll find out in just a few minutes which uh, will be the first kind of train, which first wagons to uh, go around the layout as well. As we get towards the end of the fiddle yard. See the throat uh, comes onto the lift out section where the laptop is. Pretty smooth. On the laptop and back to pretty much where we started. There we go. So that was pretty pretty good. I'm very pleased that that's the first thing that comes around. The uh, only kind of slight bobble is this, obviously this join here. It needs to be tidied up a bit, so I think I said that on the last uh, update, so I'll certainly give that a go. I'm going to go get uh, some wagons and see how we go at pulling a, uh, a train round. So deciding what to run with the uh, 56 was fairly easy. I decided that I'm going to uh, choose what I thought were my uh, favourite wagons of the year. Um, and it's the BLA and BBA wagons from Cavalex, um, both of which are stunning, but uh, the BBA especially is uh, a beautiful, beautiful wagon. The uh, mesh decking is uh, is absolutely stunning. And I did a full review earlier in the year and uh, stand by what I said, certainly our wagon of the year. Um, so let's give this a go around, see if it makes it. Hopefully it does. Um, <laughs> otherwise, there's going to be some uh, adjustments to make on the uh, track. Let's have a go and see what we get. there we go a massive milestone for me on this layout um, merry christmas and i'll see you all again soon for the december update at the end of the month bye bye